Hello everyone, welcome to Learning Techniques. This is your host, Heman Gangwar. And today we are going to discuss how we can upgrade our system from a Red Hat 7 to a Red Hat 8. So let's quickly jump to the putty session and see how these things go in action. So uh, you, can, you can upgrade basically through two approaches. Either you create a new system and install back all the stuff which you have done on your original system and repeat the work. Or another thing can be you can use a, a in-place upgrade sort of thing. Fortunately, Red Hat provides an utility called LiApp that can help you to upgrade from Red Hat 7 to 8. It, it actually uh, saves your time, money, effort, a lot of things. And obviously, you're going to learn something new. So let's move to the uh, basically before any upgrade, I would suggest go and take the backup of your machine, uh, maybe in any form. The backup can be in form of your uh, snapshots or something like that. So I have a test machine and I'll take a snapshot of that just to bring the safer in. If you are performing this uh, documenting steps on a physical box, then uh, I would suggest do have a backup from any third party backup tool like Net Backup or any other tool, but definitely have a backup. So let me quickly switch back to a putty again. And uh, apart from that, uh, you should have a valid subscription. Do not try a DVD or sort of thing. Have a subscription either from uh, Red Hat free tier, you can use a free tier subscription or uh, maybe you can use a Red Hat satellite. Then obviously you need to check at the first stage uh, about the application compatibility with the new operating system. Is it compatible or is it not? So the systems which are used in um, my environment is, they are basically subscribed through Red Hat free tier developer subscription. So we can use basically subscription manager utility to see uh, the valid subscription attached. Red Hat has uh, actually provided a very good document uh, around this, how you can perform this activity. Still, if you want to, uh, I just want you to uh, save you some time and have some direct test tips so that when you are going to test, you have some sort of uh, uh, video source uh, going in front of you where you can uh, refer and perform these steps accordingly. So, I have my valid subscription attached to my system. Now, uh, in order to proceed, uh, first we need a subscription, a base subscription to be uh, attached, enabled, and another will be the extra subscription uh, for some extra packages. So let's enable them. Okay, and the similar way, now, We'll attach our extra subscription. Okay, so once your uh, required repositories are enabled, um, you can set your content view to the latest version or to a specified version. So I prefer setting it to the latest version so that my system will pick all the latest updates. So with the release unset option, you can uh, unset it to some any previously set release and uh, it will pick the package from the latest channel. Okay, so it's set for us. Now, uh, in case if you are using a version control or a version lock basically for uh, locking any uh, package to be updated, uh, you need to clear that as well. Else the upgrade will be failed. So I'm not sure in your environment if it's there. If it's there, you can clear the lock through uh, a yum version lock clear command. Now, once uh, you have all uh, done all these, before proceeding with the upgrade, uh, let's first update our system so that all the uh, packages are on the latest version. So you can uh, change this command to uh, provide some inclusions or exclusions as per your environment. Uh, since we're in a lab environment, so I'm uh, updating everything which installed in my system. This step may take some time, uh, maybe a minute or maybe 30 minutes or so, depending on your environment. So with the power of editing, I'm just pausing this video for that much time and we'll be back when uh, my system is updated. 
and it's ready for reboot. You can come back when yours is done. Okay, so our system is back after reboot and it's upgraded to the latest version. Um, we can stick through unim a what version we are getting. Okay, so it's 45.1. Now, we prepared our system for an upgrade and now the next step is uh, we have to install the Lee app utility and analyze the reports, uh, which it generate, pre-upgrade reports, generate whatever issues which it uh, mentions and how to fix them. So, uh, let me quickly install the Lee app and along with it, I am adding some extra binaries, which you may skip as per your requirement if it's already there, or you can install, it's a non-harming. Uh, I'm adding cockpit Lee app so that uh, I can see the report in a UI, a better UI. Okay, so packages are installed. Um, now we have to add some uh, Lee app files um, so that we won't get some uh, repo MD CSV errors. And the link to those files I have mentioned in the uh, document section, which I'm adding with this video. And uh, I have copied to save the time, I have copied, downloaded, and copied to my system. So I'm just simply um, copying that to the location which is required and then remove the package. So it's. Uh, extracted inside that location. So it's there now. Now the next step will be, uh, it's there with us. So uh, let's start the cockpit service so that we have a UI. And I'm not sure in the system if the firewall is running or not. Okay, firewall is running. So uh, let's add the cockpit port as well so that we won't face such issues while accessing the cockpit on the UI. Okay, so cockpit is installed for us. Now, uh, before performing an actual upgrade, Lee app allows us to perform a pre-upgrade so that we can generate a pre-upgrade report and uh, analyze it, what issues we can get in our system or uh, whatever. Can. So the simple command is Lee app and the pre-upgrade. It will not perform an actual upgrade, but it will try to simulate what will happen when you perform an upgrade. So this is the command. This command may take some time depending on your system space or uh, whatever applications you are using or on different factors. Okay, so uh, this report, uh, pre upgrade report completed, and uh, you gave me some messages. You can see in the UI as well the Lee app pre upgrade logs uh, in the report. Or if you want, we can switch to the uh, you can see the CLI as well. And, uh, if you want, you can switch to the UI. So let's quickly jump to the UI and uh, see what else we get in this report. Okay, so we have the report. It has some inhibitors, which actually means it's inhibiting your uh, You need to fix them first. And uh, obviously, uh, as per the priority, the high risk should be fixed. Medium or low, you can ignore, depending how critical they are for you. So let's go one by one. So the inhibitor thing is, uh, okay, uh, it asks you to permit a root login, yes, to a SSD config. Okay, I make a note of this. Then the second inhibitor is uh, you have to remove the kernel module. Uh, maybe it's not supported. So PATA ACPI is not supported. So we have to remove this module as well. You have to take care that removing a module will not make system unstable. So obviously always be cautious before removing anything. Then the third inhibitor is uh, we have to add something, uh, the module option in the answer file. Okay, it's for a PAM PKCS module basically. The medium one, it depends on the crony. I'm not using crony, so I can skip it. 
then it's uh, basically it's saying that uh, legacy biosystems grub core uh, does not get automatically updated when grub is upgraded so that's fine then my last one is the python one which this command i have to run after upgrade so i have to make a note of it okay fine let's quickly uh, move to the system and make these amendments and then uh, pre-upgrade again okay so I means the same thing you can uh, view in the cli reports as well it's your priority how you want to uh, read those things So let me first remove the module. So the command is mod probe hyphen r, or you can use rm mod. It all depends on your choice for command you want to use. Then in the sshd sshd config file, uh, let's update the permit root login parameter as yes. Okay, so I'm uncommenting it, saving it. You can restart or reload your SSHD depending on your choice. Then uh, it asks us to remove the PKSI module confirmation as true in the answer file. So let me remove that as well. And now let's run a pre upgrade again to see if we are still getting any inhibitor errors. It should be quick this time. Okay, so the end of this report, I do not see any inhibitor in our uh, report. Let's quickly jump to the UI as well and see if there is any inhibitor present. So just refresh it once more and see. Okay, there are some remediation tasks which it needs us to do that. The one is post upgrade, we have to set the Python 3 and the other is the grub thing. So we have to verify if our grub is updated fine or not. What medium thing are there? There's nothing major. It may be little to PAM. The medium and low means you, you can uh, skip or you can uh, make, depending on your choice, it can uh, vary from uh, user uh, UID change to something else. For example, SLinux will be set to permissive mode. So after the upgrade, we have to set to the enforcing. So these type of things uh, which we have to perform in the upgrade. So one, once you are done with your thorough fixing and analysis of your report uh, we can now switch to the actual upgrade state so there's nothing uh, different in that apart from liap pre-upgrade we are this time using liap upgrade So in case it notices any any issues while upgrading, it will abort it and uh, send you the error in a file on uh, name liapreport.txt. You can analyze that. So it may take some time. I'm going to pause my video and I'll come back when my system is upgraded and ready to reboot. So now it's marking uh, the packages for the uh, installation and upgradation. And that a bit would be take when we in the reboot phase. Okay, so it's validating whether um, the it's basically verifying whether the new RPM will be compatible or uh, will be able to install or not. Uninstalling the binaries as well. If everything goes fine, uh, we'll not see any errors. 
So as we can see, the downloaded packages were saved in the cache. So the until the next successful transaction, if you want to clean them, or if you roll back from here, just perform my um, clean DNF clean packages, or generating a uh, any time FS for us. Okay, so we are done with the, the great thing. Um, everything went fine, nothing bad reported. If you want, you can see uh, whatever reports generated over here. Let's have a quick look. What it contains, it contains your risk factor and all that stuff which we uh, saw in a UI. Then uh, your upgrade logs whatever stuff it has done, uh, whatever RPM checks or uh, cache making. So after that, we are good for a reboot. This time I will not come back after a reboot. Instead, I want you to see the console with me so that you can see what actual steps is happening. We have an init ramifis created for the upgrade one. So it will perform the actual upgrade from here. It will perform all those steps which we see in the uh, debug log files. It will perform it in every phase. RPMs will be upgraded. Always make sure that you're monitoring your console so that uh, you're aware what's actually happening or whatever breaking in the reboot phase. Every system is different, so you may encounter issues in the reboot stage as well. The best approach will be how best you um, analyze the report and fix that. Every system is different, so the issues will be different for sure. In a couple of seconds, it will start with the upgrade of RPMs. Even you can see it has started taking the RPMs. So the RPM upgrade is in uh, process. The new RPMs are installed, which are compatible with Red Hat 8. So this step will take some time, depending uh, how big your system and how many packages it's going to upgrade. Now, once upgrade is completed on the console, it's uh, checking the any if Red Hat 7 packages are not left. And if they're left, we have to remove them. A report file also generated, which we can uh, analyze later. So now it rebooted again, and it will start booting with the new Red Hat 8 OS. So you can see uh, it's a mix of Red Hat 8 and uh, their old kernels of Red Hat 7 present as well. So in a couple of seconds, the system should boot back. So it completed fine with the SLN is relabeling and uh, now it's booting back the system. So I'm now back on my system and uh, it's up and accessible. Obviously the name would remain same. Now, it's upgraded to Red Hat 8. So the, in the same way, the pre-upgrade steps were important. The post-upgrade steps were also important. And uh, if you have noticed the report generated, there was a step to um, fix our SLNX to make it enforcing or to make our Python binary pointing to the correct thing. So let's first set the Python to the Python 3, which was a recommendation. Then a post recommendation was to set the S Linux. Let's see in what state it was currently. So it's in permissive state. So set and force. And uh, so it's enforcing now. And apart from that, uh, you can list uh, what all kernel if you want to clean the boot space you can do that as well so before proceeding with that let's first uh, validate if we have any any rpms remained of el7 and if 
if they are, then we have to remove them. So yes, we have a couple of, so let's quickly perform a YAM arrays of those RPMs. Some of them are LIA binaries, the old LIA binaries, so it won't harm my system, but still, if it consists of any application RPMs, you will you should be very cautious while removing them, or you can check with the application team whether uh, if they have installed any software, is it still required or can they upgrade with a Red Hat 8 compatible version of that. So if you are happy that your system uh, is alive, you can uh, clean the, basically the kernel RPMs, the old kernel RPMs, if you don't want to put that. So there are no old kernels available. Um, so we are good. Let's uh, validate our slash boot space as well. Um, it's also under threshold. So it's a one GB boot space. That's uh, more than enough for a boot. Also, we can see if we have uh, the default setting of grub, uh, is, are those settings pointing to our proc command line? So let's see the command line options. Okay, so they are, they looks good to me in the same uh, VG name and the same LV name as uh, swap and the uh, root VGLV name is there. The option looks fine to me. The boot image is this, we would think the correct image. Uh, in case uh, uh, you are not aware, you can um, install the boot basically. So the command will be grub mk config. So the command will be mkconfig hyphen o and the path of your grub.conf. So it's a system DBS system. So if you can grub2 and the grub.cfg. If you want, you can rewrite accordingly. So if there are any other modifications which you have to do, uh, please do that. And with this note, my system is upgraded and I'm going to close this video session. You can test it, let me know, share your views. Do remember this is a lab-based setup. So when you're going to perform it on your live system, do have a proper backup and uh, always analyze the report properly. So thanks for being such a nice audience. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.